So if you have never been to a coin show before, or you have, but you would like some tips and advice on how to have a better experience at your next one, well, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. I myself have been to over 100 coin shows in my life, and over that time, I have learned some very best practices that you can use to make sure that you have a good experience buying and selling. So let's get into it, but do me a favor before we do, don't forget to go down below and subscribe. I really appreciate you helping me continue to grow the channel. All right, let's get into it. Make sure you don't miss out on your chance to win a full monster box of Silver Eagles by going to our sponsor, sdbullion.com forward slash Silver Seeker and get your entry today. Now, the number one thing I can tell you to do, I think this is probably the most important, is to set a budget and stick to it. When going to a coin show, it's very easy to overspend, especially if you're into pretty shiny silver things like I am, or really rare coins, or whatever it may be. You can definitely spend more than you originally intended to go with. Some people can handle that, others cannot. So the most important thing to do is make sure that you figure out how much you're willing to spend and don't go a dime over that. Keep in mind, especially if it's a coin show that's far away, you also might have to deal with gas prices as well as hotels, parking. You know, there are parking fees for a lot of the coin shows as well, depending on where it's being held. So make sure you factor many of those different things in as well and make sure you don't go over that number. Now, what I'll tell you is when going to coin shows, a lot of dealers don't actually take credit cards or checks. So you have to go with cash. So what I like to do is just take as much cash as I'm willing to spend and only spend that amount. When I get to zero, I'm done. You're welcome to look around and see more stuff, but stop right there. So the next thing I'll tell you, and this is probably even more important than budgeting, is to make sure you have a good working knowledge of what the value of certain things are. So if you're going to buy gold and silver, make sure you know what the spot price is currently, as well as what the average premium is on things like one ounce silver rounds, eagles, or whatever else it is that you are there to buy that silver or gold. Now on this channel, we actually cover quite often the premiums on things like eagles and rounds. So if you watch this channel pretty often, you probably have a really good idea of what those numbers look like. But even if you don't, and if you don't want to go back and watch my videos, there are definitely ways that you can do it. For example, going to some of the big online retailers, going to eBay listings, and keep in mind, only look at the big dealers on eBay. Don't look at someone with five feedback and say, oh yeah, that's a great price. That's what I should get. Um, but you can look at the big dealers on eBay. You can look at the big online dealers as well and get an idea of what the premiums look like. You can also call around local coin shops and see what they're selling for as well so that when you go to a coin show, you are ready with the knowledge of what the prices on things like gold and silver are going for. Now, when it comes to rare coins, there are a number of different ways that you can get the value for rare coins. For example, you can go to finalized, finished eBay auctions. Don't go for what people are asking. Look for what things have actually sold for. That's a really good way to do it. Another thing you can do is ask them to see the gray sheet or ask them what the gray sheet value is. I, will, I can't say every single dealer because I can't speak for everyone, but the high majority of coin dealers, especially at coin shows, have a gray sheet on hand and they are happy to show it to you and tell you what the value is. So for example, if you have a Morgan silver dollar that's like MS63, you can look at the gray sheet and see what the MS63 of that year Morgan silver dollar is going for. And again, as well, you can look online and see what the finished eBay auction listings went for, what they actually sold for. You can also see what they're selling for on different online sites as well, just to get an idea of what you should be buying. Now, with that in mind, remember that there are advantages to buying a coin at a coin show over buying it online, for example, through eBay that do have value. So for example, if a coin dealer has something in a showcase that's $5 more than what you can buy it for on eBay, Keep in mind that at the coin show, you get to take it home right then and there. You don't have to worry about issues with shipping. And additionally, you actually get to see the coin in front of your face and know exactly what it is you're buying instead of just looking at pictures. Another thing to do and keep this in mind is that you can also just look around the coin show and see if another dealer has it. The beauty of being at a coin show is that there are a lot of dealers all competing with each other. So if this coin dealer has it for 70, you may be able to find another coin dealer that has it for 65 and save yourself five bucks that way as well. So make sure you look around and if you can't find it, you can always go back and hopefully he hasn't sold it. Generally, you should be okay, but there are risks to you know someone else coming up and buying it while you're not there but it could be advantageous to just look around and try and find a better deal somewhere else on the floor as well now the next thing you want to be able to do at a coin show is negotiate now i know a lot of people don't like negotiation they feel it creates confrontation or they feel they're being rude but i will tell you this to try and put your mind at ease depending on the type of item a lot of coin dealers at coin shows actually are willing to negotiate 
Now that may not be the case on things like silver rounds because the margins are so thin anyway, uh, silver eagles, gold, whatever it is. But when it comes to rare coins, generally the margins are a little bit softer and so they are able to move the price around a little bit. You know, if coin dealer bought a coin for $60 that he has listed for 90, he might be willing to take 80 on it just so he can move it and then use that cash to buy more product that he can then resell and make even more money. A lot of coin dealers realize it's generally not advantageous for them to hang on to the same coins for years on end, so they will discount them to get rid of them quickly and be able to go on to that next new deal with that money. Now, of course, I'm not saying that it's going to work every single time. Sometimes they are you know, very firm on the numbers they want on their coins, but it's always worth trying. I will also tell you also to put your mind at ease that even if the coin dealer is not willing to negotiate, he expects people to ask anyway because it is very, very common to do so at a coin show. So don't feel like you're being rude. Don't feel like you're creating confrontation and just know that most coin dealers expect to have the prices negotiated. Whether or not they're willing to do so is totally up to them, but they are not going to take offense in you trying to do so. Now, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about, and I believe that this one is also quite important, is safety. Now there's two different types of safety when going to a coin show, and the first one is your physical safety. So I will give you a couple of very easy to follow tips for that. First and foremost, make sure that you don't try and save five or 10 bucks on parking by parking three or four blocks away where you have to walk all by yourself because you never know who's watching you, who's following you. And if you're walking around with a bunch of money or buying a bunch of coins or flashing things, whatever it may be, or just because you're leaving a coin show, you may get followed by someone who wants to take advantage of you being off by yourself. So pay the extra five or 10 bucks if you have to, to park in a public parking lot near the show so that you don't have to be all by yourself with no one around watching. Additionally, I kind of already hinted on this, but don't go around flashing all of your money. If you walk into a coin show with $10,000, don't hold it up to a coin dealer and say, well, I have $10,000 to spend while you slam it on a showcase because people will notice that and you don't want the wrong people to notice that. Now, the other thing about safety when it comes to going to a coin show, of course, is to make sure you know what to look for, especially if you're looking for rare coins. So if you're looking for an 1893S, for example, Morgan Silver Dollar, make sure you know about the identifiers to look for in that coin, like the rabbit ears, things that only that coin would have so you can look and make sure it's there so you know you're not buying a fake coin. Additionally, make sure you know how to tell if a coin is cleaned. So there are many coins that you can buy at coin shows that have been cleaned, whether or not the dealer tells you it's been cleaned or if he even knows, because again, coin dealers are human as well, no one is perfect, make sure you know what to look for and don't buy a cleaned coin that's not gonna be worth near as much as you think it is. Now, when it comes to silver, you can absolutely ask the dealer where he sourced his silver from or if he can test it, especially if you're buying a lot. In general, you're not going to find a whole lot of fake silver at a coin show because there are so many other coin dealers around and those coin dealers don't want to be called out by you know another coin dealer saying, hey, why do you have fake silver in your case? That being said, it's always best to protect yourself because you never know. So make sure you know what to look for. Go and take the ping test. I've done a video on the ping test before on the channel. I'll put a link down below if you haven't seen it yet. There's a lot of different ways you can test your gold and silver. You can ask them if you can test it. You can ask them if they can verify it, whatever it may be. And if it ever feels too good to be true, it probably is. So make sure you protect yourself in that way as well. Now, the final thing I'll talk to you about, and I don't think this one is as important as the other things I've said, but I still think it's something that you should consider, is building relationships. Now, whether it be with a coin dealer that you happen to find at a coin show that happens to be in your area, and you can build a relationship with him and get better deals in the future if you continue to shop at his shop, or if it's just building a relationship with another coin collector or silver stacker. I mean, I wouldn't recommend giving him your personal phone number or address so that they can find you, but maybe agree you know, to have a future meet and greet in a public place. Uh, maybe you can discuss, you know, things online together by exchanging email addresses, whatever it may be. But building relationships is a really good way to involve yourself even more in the coin and silver stacking community. And I think coin shows are a really good place to do that. Uh, in fact, for example, this next coin show that I'm going to is just in a couple of days in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there are going to be dozens of coin YouTubers as well as viewers at that show. And I will look forward to meeting very, very many of you 
while I am there here in the next few days. So that is it for me today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit. If you did, do me a favor and let me know down below. Or if there's something that you think in this video I may have missed that would help someone have a great coin show, do me a favor and leave that in a comment down below. I would love to see your comments on that subject as well. So guys, again, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna put a link to a video up here. If you haven't seen that yet, definitely go and check it out. And other than that, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.